No, I'm Kayla. <laughs> What's kidding? Let me tell you something. Me too. You better talk to Joe nice and hope he edit that face you just made out, this <laughs> baby. He Don't won't. Do. I hope he doesn't. Don't do me dirty. Mm. It won't be doing you dirty. I love you. Showing the people who you really are. <laughs> they see who I a am. A raging lunatic. The menace. A raging lunatic. <laughs> An agent of chaos. A menace. Yeah. Mm. To society. <laughs> part time. Only part time. Not that's -time. still All too often. often. Honestly, hon, that's your full time job. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, what's the full time job? Everything Weird. we just said, being a menace, <laughs> yeah. agent oh. of chaos. I don't know. I only villain. get paid a I That's your motive. Time. It's fun, though. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's never why do it it's the... your full-time right. job. You, right. It's so fun to you. It yeah. breaks up the monotony of life, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It does. It does, because y'all know I'd be in that lab with themselves. <sighs> Bored as hell. <laughs> and you just want to be goofy, and it makes things so silly much goofy. better. Silly goofy. Just in a silly goofy mood. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm trying to get it together. Let me charge up. <laughs> charge up. Energizer, buddy. Yeah. Hence Baby. my cheeks give me a little color. Isn't that what they do? Um, that's what the do. Mm. <laughs> it worked. Right. I don't know if I heard my echo. If I heard me in your camera niche, but that was a mess. That's what happens when you yell. So, okay. You guys live. <laughs>
20 whatever because it was like if that's the case and up yeah, normally. 14, 14 for young adults. but that would be more like middle grade that's like now I'm that they've saying. had that middle grade genre been more popular mm -hmm. like that is that 14 and don't they have actual 13, like teen like so a, maybe like a teen category for real adults yeah because range. i think we're so used to young adult being like fantasy with like a sprinkle of like sex or death or grief but like even though the themes in this were mature i'm like well if you're an adult not appropriate but yeah i don't know like it's appropriate like it felt i was like oh this is young adult too so according to goodreads aka amazon aka jeff bezos and now young <clears throat> sorry young adult books um are for ages roughly roughly ages 13 to 18. So it's a huge, it's a, that's quite a range though. That's quite a range. I almost I would feel not like, be calling them young adults. Yeah, I think that they're, I almost feel like they're breaking that category up though, like you just said, like into the middle grade. Mm -hmm. And then you have teen, teen and then yeah. YA. Right. Cause that's a very vast yes. age mm -hmm. range. And 13 okay. year olds should not be reading what 18 year olds. I'm going to be honest, so that's I would have ate this up as a 13-year-old. Oh, yeah. Would have ate it up. Right. But that's, that's not the question. <laughs> <laughs> the question yeah. is, what's appropriate <laughs> for the age group that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. And this seemed a little more I mature. Guess it seemed like a cool. lot. But also, I guess it's not because isn't the hate you give? Weren't, weren't they kids reading that in like yeah. middle school? Mm -hmm. So maybe... Yep. Maybe it wasn't. Well, what do I know? Either way, <laughs> it was good. So, <laughs> back to our main point here. So, this book is supposed to be this Carrie retelling. That's what literally what I kept seeing everywhere. It was like, Carrie retelling. She did that. Wow. And I'm like, it was more than that. I Absolutely. almost, I want people to literally just take it off. Just take it off. Because... Yes, it had some of the elements of Carrie, but I like she took this to a deeper level. Like Carrie to me is silly. <laughs> well, it, Carrie you know? was supposed to be more so based on like feminism, right? Like, I don't know. I've never read know. Carrie. You've I never saw the movie. Well, have you seen the movie? Even the remake. Oh, oh. Chloe. Um, well, well, that's you've been here, Kayla. Blind. What'd you say? That's interesting that you hadn't seen the like the movie because I haven't read the yeah, book, no, but I've haven't. seen the movie, and so no. I kept drawing parallels mm -hmm. between the book and I agree with Niche like this, like saying, "Oh, this is a retelling of Carrie." Feels underwhelming compared to what the book actually was. It was a lot more than that, so I thought that was interesting. But if you haven't read or seen it, then. Uh... <laughs> I just knew like the general gist prom, the girl kill everybody. She got prom, these powers. Murder. The bullying. Murder. Powers the bullying that exactly. led to that. Exactly. And those so, elements yeah. were the same in this book. Right. I this think just that took it to a different level the because setting, she was biracial in a right. passing. White passing biracial. White which, passing ooh, biracial ooh. in a very racist southern town. White segregation. I'm not um, going to lie. This gave me Riverdale because at the beginning I was like, what age is this? What? I mean, not age, but like time period. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. You know how in Riverdale it's like they have cell phones, but then everything else is old. like this old like. Vibe. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe. I kind too. of got the same. I was like, oh, so y'all are really trying to like be stuck in your ways in yeah. 20, in like the 2000s. Like, be for real. <laughs> what's going on? And I feel like that, that's what did it for me. I said, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> right. Then Niche read it, started reading it. I started reading it. And then somebody commented on it and we've been wanting to read a book for this podcast that was based on one of our followers like recommendations or picks or whatever they mm -hmm. wanted to see and it's just taken us forever to find you know the perfect book that hit all that those we points want to read that we actually want to read that our followers <laughs> want us to read we gotta want to um, read the book too right 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 um and then you know eventually all the girls hopped on the bandwagon and we got it done and now we're recording this video so you're welcome yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
shout out to that that person. I really don't appreciate remember. It. Can't remember. We, I can't remember. Shout know, out to you. But you know who you are. Shout out to you. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you end up here. You can just but, comment the emoji of the girl raising her hand. Yeah, like that's, your hand hand up. Up. that's me. That was me. And then we'll know that it was <laughs> you, and we can thank you. <laughs> but, okay. Let's give some trigger warnings before we actually get into this book, even though we've been discussing it for several minutes already. Trigger warnings for Weight of Blood include racism, assault, abuse, violence, microaggressions, police brutality, and murder. So again, very, very heavy topics. Um, we could maybe even include gore. Actually, yeah. There was some yeah. gore in that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So those are the trigger warnings, so just be aware. If you do not want any spoilers for this book and you haven't read it yet, now would be your time to exit stage left. Come back when you're ready. We'll miss you. And or the you rest can just stay. Yeah, or stay. Or stay. But we'll see you later, whatever you decide. Um, we're getting into it. So... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, y'all. But we were supposed to record this what a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> I started the book like that Wednesday. Was done Friday. Mm -hmm. Ate it up, no mm -hmm. crumbs. Delicious, so good. <laughs> and I feel like I was on the other side of the spectrum. Like I started the book with Niche. Like me and Niche were kind of on the other side of the spectrum. It took us <laughs> honestly weeks and possibly months to finish this book because we were waiting for everyone else to finish and for you know the podcast schedule to be really open up and everything. yeah. I started this in like if I look, it, I think we what, started like, it like a while ago. Yeah. September. That's like, the part I was referring to. I know that y'all started a while ago. I didn't realize y'all were waiting. Well, it wasn't necessarily waiting for you. I just didn't want to finish it so mm -hmm. early and then yes. have and then weeks forget. go by yeah. and then kind of forget. Like, I write notes after I finish these podcast books, but it kind of she she makes it, it better to have it, like, fresher. Fresh. So, I mean, I, we Correct. finished it a couple weeks ago, but, I mean, it was better than us finishing it in September <clears throat> and, trying and, then to to, and then trying to remember. Yeah, that's right. a good point. Cause that but don't happen. It was still pretty good. Like I don't mm -hmm. know, my mind. It, I kept, whenever I picked this book back up, I was right back in the story. It didn't really take me long. I remembered everything that was going on. It wasn't like super complex. Like it, the story was continuously developing. Mm -hmm. So, and I was entertained by it. And then when I finally got to finish, I loved the ending, and you know, it wrapped up everything. Like I don't know, it didn't. It still was good, even though I didn't read it in a couple days. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I feel the same way. I feel like if I would have just sat down, I would have been like Kayla and I would have been done in two days, right. but I didn't want to forget stuff. And I feel like I still ended up forgetting, like, you know, like the little insignificant things, yeah. Yeah. like, you know, the background people that we don't really care that much about. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. But the main points stay the same. Sis? <laughs> Okay, hold on. So first of all, at the very beginning, I think I, I was like literally two pages in, two pages in, and I was like, oh, perfect. This is such a good pick. I'm having such a good time. And that was <laughs> because on page two. literally I said, oh, no, she didn't. She's not she out here. She said, the rain. Yeah, that's that was literally my edge. That was her, that was and her I mortal enemy. That. She said, I the rain. That. And I said, oh, we've all been there. Like, but then I realized, like, it took me a minute to kind of realize that not only was she worried about the rain because of her hair, but She's passing. she was about to give away her true identity. <laughs> Y'all. Which That's... Papa warned her to never yes. do. Yes. That they cannot <laughs> find out. Ever. You yeah. are a Negro. Don't let them know. And that was like her first period or like her second period. Of yeah. School. Yes. Like, yeah. This is just like horrible. Like the done. book starts out with her hearing thunder and it's just like, it just really sets the scene. It gets you yes. in her perspective and her yeah. mind frame of what she knows and what she doesn't mm -hmm. know. And it's like Maddie is immediately thrown into this situation that she isn't prepared for at all. Yes. And it's like the book sets off from there. Mm -hmm. The book then, is also prefaced by a bunch of articles that 
Yeah. Like throughout the whole book, you have these interviews, uh, like the radio podcasts, podcasts, yeah, podcasts. Yeah. about, News you clippings. know, this crazy thing that Maddie did. And this is, you know, towards the end of the book, but throughout the whole book, it's just sprinkled within of just how much of a monster she is and just where she came from. Yeah. But it's like, I really love the flashbacks of like mm -hmm. Maddie in the beginning. And you just really get a sense of who she was. And you are immediately mm -hmm. see like the podcast and, you know, recollections that people had of her are completely different than, you know, what she actually is and how she actually thinks and right. how she mm -hmm. feels. Yeah. Because you would have really thought from the way they were interviewing these people that she was the villain. I said, be for real. Be for real. Hey. Because from jump, like even when they were on that little run, when it did start raining, like they were already like making fun of her. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I see. Oof. I see how this is going to go. Like yeah. from jump, I said, I hope I hope she got all of them. I said, <laughs> I said honestly, whatever happens <laughs> at this point, it's your own fault because they like there's like, I guess it just comes to a point where you're just like, what more? What more are you going to do to this girl? Like, what are you getting out mm -hmm. of this? Right. Like, I never. And I think and that's was... something the whole time I was thinking that, like, what are you getting out of this? Just literally just being malicious, continuously, literally continuously torturous for her. So I don't know. I just really felt bad for her the whole so time. Bad. So, so, so bad. Um, and the fact that there really weren't any type of people trying to stick up for her, you know, it was, again, yeah. let's go back to the too black for the white kids, too white for the black kids, you know? So yeah. she was having issues from both sides. I was like, damn, girl, I'm sorry. But to, she was to be clear, clear, it wasn't because she was too black for the white kids, too white for the black kids. It's because she was weird. And that's why and her she was, clothes was looking her kind clothes of crazy. Were old. But that was out of her control. smell that great either. No, it, that was no, it completely control. was. But I'm saying, like, yeah. they weren't bullying her because they're like, you're too white. Because they thought they that she, thought was, she white. was white. They just thought she was a weird white person. Because, <laughs> you know, she was wearing that old dust <laughs> uh, granny <Heartless>. sweater. <laughs> Yeah, that cardigan. I don't know why I pictured it as being moldy. It probably wasn't, but I moldy know it Lord. just because it had a smell. Like yeah, you know, she, it was, they did say she was stinky. And then she like was wearing that balls? poodle. Yes, that's mm. it. Moth balls. Mm. And then she had a that... poodle skirt, which I imagine was like from the seventies, like yeah. pink with the poodle at the bottom, little rinky dink. Right. And then she was quiet. Which I imagine her as like tall, kind of lanky. So. She was weird to them. Now, does that give them the right to absolutely torture her? Of course not. But I don't think in the beginning it was about race. Now, when they found out yeah. that she was black, so then, she has then an afro. it was weird. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like it legit it became yeah. her hair. Throw a, pen, throw a pencil in her hair. It stuck. Like, I that was wild. Like oh, my Same. God. She really I, always kept saying how sensitive her scalp was. And as someone who has a sensitive bruh. scalp, like I really mm -hmm. felt that. And I'm like, you guys are throwing sharp ass pencils on her scalp. Like she already getting burnt up by this by this hot comb. <laughs> she every everything every week. like they were literally torturing her. And then it's like mm -hmm. that and then, you know, out of all that throwing the pencils, like mm -hmm. her power awakens. Girl. Yes. And she has no idea about this, like everybody start everybody gets a headache and all said, this other stuff was that an earthquake <laughs> all like, the windows no, had the ground was moving the other stuff was shaking just in like, this it was so weird just in this no one else felt it they're like oh well we were on the ground floor <laughs> y'all are still the only ones sense. who engage your brain engage your brain there's some supernatural activity going on okay <laughs> and it but was right after you were messing with it. somebody Hmm. And they had headaches. Hmm. You like have a to be of very self-aware, the and they were not self-aware. They were not. They yeah. they did not care about anything the about that themselves. They were like, "Oh, she's a not black. white. We could have been ostracizing her even harder this whole <laughs> whole time. <laughs> Literally, Today, that was if their only logic. we had known there was step a Negro up. in our midst. <laughs> <laughs> they said, it's time to step up these pranks, if you will. Right. I think and the they funny already part knew her dad was odd. So yeah, it was I, just ugh, the comments that they were making about like what her children would look like, like them being dark. And do you see 
this light white passing lady how does that make any sense it was I mean, like it when the royal happen, family but... was concerned mm -hmm. about archie and they were like oh my god He's coloring what if he comes out dark that boy is what and what the right what the hell does is, that even have to what, do with, do with anything else? exactly because <laughs> if they're dark enough we can openly ostracize her <laughs> Hello, we didn't know that we could be doing it. We thought she was one of us. But now that we see her afro, as they called it, now it's like a little perfect check mark. A little cherry on She's top. Actually, that was their motive. I think that was one of the things. Which, that's insane. Mm -hmm. And But okay, so they find out that she's black she's a black right mm -hmm. um so she's on one side of the spectrum being completely tortured everything she is just this weird oddity that the white kids at the school didn't even know that they had then on the other side of the spectrum we have kenny kendrick whom is kendrick. this kenny 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 He's the Where star do we start? football player. <laughs> he is an honor student. Like he, he, is he was, he the was the good man. Black. He's yeah, the good he was the man boy. on campus. Was getting right. recruited to UAB. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Got recruited on a football scholarship. Period. Was going to the NFL. Daddy was Probably. doing too much. Dad was doing too right. much. You need to eat some some chicken and some vegetables and go do another workout. You know, like yeah. He said mm, like, a I slice of wanna... pizza. He said, no. take your that nutritionist and add an extra mile to your run. Like, okay. Like, relax. <sighs> That's supposed to be my 13th reason. Forget football. <laughs> I'm going to end it all. The constant controlling, all he ever talked about with his son was football. He even admitted at one point, he said, I put my only daughter's welfare and well-being behind you. I'm like, now what that kind of shit? And why that would you different. say that out loud? Why would you say that out loud? I didn't yeah. ask you to do that. And he didn't. said, in fact, I don't even really like football like that. He said, you made it all about football. He said, mm. look, we got to get up out these trenches. You see this racist ass town we live in? We got to get up out of here. <laughs> but he pushed too hard. Pushed too hard, yeah. Pushed too hard. Yeah. It, so Kenny was pushed on in the home. He was pushed mm -hmm. at school. He Man. only hung out with the white kids at school. He didn't go to, you know, any... Um, bsa meetings mm -hmm. or anything like that our bsu meetings he didn't his sister was what the president, the president. and so formed the bsu she was black on black campus black. yeah she yeah. was black and mm -hmm. black and she kept saying like kenny what are you doing and kenny she was, was like i'm not like calling that calling him a coon yeah and, and was because he'll he never be one of was. those negroes <laughs> that's what he said verbatim okay. and that's what he thought and you know his girlfriend Wendy and no, uh, white friend, his best you. friends Wendy Child, Wendy 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 Wendy, Wendy Wendy said mm, that's my meal ticket I have to make sure he makes it to practice on time did you get your smoothie wait why aren't she you at the gym and she said and don't worry like I've already got enough scholarships I'm gonna follow him and I'm not even gonna tell Tell him she he's gonna be so, so excited. Had a and full then ride he, to the ground. He's gonna help me with the what is it after sophomore year? She was she wasn't gonna have she enough money. Yeah, she was, was like, gonna be an NFL he'll, wife. That he'll was hold her it down. She was ready for that. Yeah, Girl! but never ever ever <laughs> thought to consult him on any of this. And he was that's so what none of, I he knew none of that. He didn't know any of that. That is what I didn't get. I'm like you had. She had a plan from the time they left school. All the way until they had children and moved mm -hmm. somehow, even though he was supposed to be in the NFL, we're going to move back to that town to raise their kids. Like, huh? Can you spell delusion? I can. It's W-E-N-D-Y. Okay? <laughs> that, what she was doing, <laughs> makes me sense. Wendy, it was crazy. It was well, she's, you know, off. poor white trash. She's trying to, you know... <laughs> She's yeah. She was trying to out. better her life. She was. Yes. Look, the reaction that she took was only to benefit her. Yes. They, she said, yeah. "I am she a white she, woman." It was for other people, but she was I, like, "I'm a white woman. I don't have, you know, everything that like my friends have." But I'm trying to get somewhere, and I'm gonna do the best that I can. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say go that I'm doing this for other people, but it's really just for myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know that she wasn't even self aware of that herself. 
Correct. She was not. Callie, and Callie kept telling her towards the end. She was like, can you do something for somebody other than yourself just once? Just one time. Try. And she's like, hmm, and Wendy was that's like, all I do. I only do stuff for other people. <sighs> no, she's but, like, you know, no, it's baby. all self-serving. You know, it's, yep. yeah, it's for other people, but baby, that's for you. But it all benefits you. To make you so... feel better about whatever, you know, even when she volunteered to do the all together help with prom. the integra- all together prom. <laughs> integrated yeah. prom. it was an integrated prom in 20 okay, so, but that what, was her 14, answer something the integrated prom was her answer to her besties very horrible mistake jules let's not so call which, that a mistake. which one not even a, which let's one? not call that a mistake oh her which of her it, transgressions yeah, it wasn't her transgression there we go. so once everyone finds out that maddie is a black and all the jokes start Mm -hmm. popping off and everything. Jules, a student at school, you know, a menace at school, honestly, the rich popular takes it upon herself (laughs) to show up to school dressed as Maddie in blackface. And she thinks that that is the funniest thing. And her boyfriend was Maddie's dad Mm -hmm. for the couple's costume. Cause I think all of that, I think the context of that is important. Come on now. Yeah. Showed up in blackface as another student and the student's date was her dad. Her dad. Like, huh? And she just came in laughing. Like she really thought that was the funniest thing. She said, I'm going to get him with this one. Right. And she should have known right then and there because I don't recall people laughing. Did they laugh? laugh? Yeah, because I thought I, everyone was she like... She just was like maniacally laughing when she walked oh. in. Right, but everyone else was like... Oop. Oh. And Kenny was pissed. And that was the first was time the they like saw this other side of Kendrick. And he was like, what is y'all doing? What the fuck are you doing? And then the principal exactly was like, like Kendrick, son, calm down. Let's talk outside. He was like, what? Perhaps She's not. in blackface. And you're calling me outside? <laughs> B-F-F-R. <laughs> Dead ass. Like, be f- for real. Why am I being brought outside? She's in black face. That is so crazy. Because I'm really trying to put myself in his shoes. And I would be asking myself, am I crazy? Are we seeing? What's going on? Everyone There's treated yeah. him like he was he was crazy. They were like, "Oh, this this angry black yes. man! Oh my god! Yes. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's angry now. He's the problem. Right? Like, calm down. Didn't do anything wrong. It was calm just down. Joke. Calm down. Well, and remember that. that was the <clears throat> sorry. Remember that was the second viral instance of this town of this oh. school mm-hmm. being put mm-hmm. on blast because the first one someone was recording. When people she had throwing those pencils, those pencils at Maddie, yeah. and it was Jules. Jules was the b- on the pencils, okay. Mm-hmm. And now and she's showing up in blackface, yeah. and everyone, oh, this racist <sighs> town, da, da da da. Like articles are being written, you know, it's mm-hmm. on the news, national news, and so they're like, how, how do we show the world that we're not a racist town, even though we have, you know, segregated proms, <laughs> black people live on the east side, don't bring your ass over here on the west side. We bully our students. There's no accountability for the actions of white students and white transgressions against black students. We treat black students unfairly. How do we show them no. that we're not racist? <gasps> Integrated prom. Got it. We'll so integrate. That'll fix everything. Then that'll we can't fix everything. be mad because we'll integrate. Even though, like, see, even though the country <laughs> club was still going to host the white their own prom. They had and the Negroes, Negroes didn't prom. go. To the yeah. to the country club, period. They mm-hmm. couldn't. No, nope. but then they threw the integrated prom in a barn. 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 It, Not even it. It was a renovated school. barn. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was renovated now. Mm. There's no animals in there no more. Right. It's cute, and some renovated barns are kind of cute. So it was like a little rustic prom, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Was, it was cute. And the only reason I say that is because, remember, the proms were always held off campus because they stopped, the school stopped hosting proms once the school became integrated and they didn't even want the kids dancing together. Oh, so the school never mm-hmm. hosted the proms, which I always thought was interesting. 
they were like, cancel it. Don't, ain't going to be no blacks in here. Just cancel all of it. And so the town just kept up with that tradition. Because remember that one boy, when they started talking about the proms, and they're like, it's not racist. It's just tradition. tradition. Yeah. Hint, like... hint, you can have a racist tradition. They are not mutually exclusive. And so <laughs> them doing this, or Wendy doing this, because this was actually all Wendy's idea slash fault. Um, they ended up having those integrated proms. And at the country club, the BSU decided to protest because the country club was not going to be, first of all, they wouldn't, oh, they wouldn't let them hold the integrated prom there because they didn't have the capacity. And they're like, you've had weddings there. This is racist. We're going to protest. And then there was police presence at their protest. For no, no, well, for no reason. You know why. You know why. Right. You know why. Mm-hmm. And the teacher was like, what was her name? Miss, Mrs. Morgan. 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 And Mrs. Morgan was like, is this really necessary? These are high school kids with signs. Why do you have a blockade up and you have weapons? She's like, you look ridiculous right now. Like, let's call it what it is. This is absurd. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Sheriff, Mr. Big Man Sheriff, goes and is like, hey, don't get trigger happy. They're just kiddos. And then said, I got to go. Well, my job's done. I've got to get home to eat my wife's pot roast or whatever was going on. And then he (laughs) leaves. And honestly, at that moment, I was like, I already knew, like, we, you know, the whole entire book is leading up to this moment, like, prom, something happened on prom, Maddie did it, Maddie did it, so as soon as I said, this is really not going to go well, and let me tell you, I feel like as soon as that happened, it just set it off, like, it was like, a chain, like, not a chain reaction to me, but it was like, every, every, page I was turned I was like oh my god what happened now it was like, like the last it? third of the book it was just so was much going on I'll give it the last quarter of the book but <laughs> my favorite part of like the last third last half of the book had to be Kenny and Maddie's like instant connection you can call it insta love but it was so cute and sweet to me it was Wendy's idea for Kenny to ask maddie to this integrated prom (laughs) that was you know wendy's idea of her social service like to she said i'm sacrificing she was like that was my that was her community service event for the month it was she was like you know that would make maddie's night like this is everything that would make her feel better so like she just did that so she wouldn't feel so bad about you know all the things that she Mm -hmm. added on to her bullying and torment Mm -hmm. and her best friend is a you know was the biggest say it (laughs) <laughs> yeah a b word she was. bully whatever you want to call her that's what she was Even if you will yeah like, yeah so she kind of everyone was kind of looking at wendy like girl this is who you're what friends with doing? for real so i felt like she mm-hmm. kind of was like not only doing things to make herself feel better like we're not racist so i'm gonna do these nice things but you're also like trying to clean shit up for jules too yeah yeah but that's that's your jules, things like where you're saying that this is like one of those deeper novels, like you see that happen all the time. You got folks like, oh, well, I'm not racist. Okay, well, what are you doing with your inner circle? Are you yeah. checking out what we need you to because do? Your friends who make comments right. to don't Kenny need about things. things, you know, you let fans. them say things like that about your black boyfriend. She's like, and Jules talking about down. your future black like, babies. Mm. And that's. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Right. When and then she didn't movie. say anything. No, nope. she didn't even break off her friendship no. with Jules until they Jules and her boyfriend, who by the way didn't even go to that high school anymore. He was up there way too much. Mm-hmm. But until Weirdo her and her behavior. boyfriend said something to Kenny at that party, and then that's when they separated. So it's like you still wasn't standing ten mm-hmm. toes down because you're not even remotely close to an ally. In fact, you're a bystander. You let racists transgressions happen all the time you don't defend forget maddie because she didn't care right. for maddie but you don't even your defend boyfriend? your boyfriend right whom no you're wonder supposed to your love. event right no wonder your event right. went to shit like 
you it, it was just never it was never going to work because also the proms were across the street from each other like the train the tracks. tracks separated them and that was it because the, people was running back and forth between it those was. two all the time but honestly wendy's best thing was to force well to influence kenny to ask maddie to prom because i felt like that was kenny's awakening almost True. was oh, like boy, forming this attachment with maddie hey, yo. The, I know y'all know exactly what part I'm talking about as soon as I say it. Were her lips always this? Sh- <laughs> I was gonna, gonna post that on Goodreads, but I'm then I was like, let me screaming. chill. But that whole, like, have. it was like two that? characters. Who, they're making out. He's Kenny is making out with Wendy, and he's just like, were her lips always this thin and chapped? And was she always this bony? Were her oh hips God. always this stiff? <laughs> Like, huh? You... And this was after he had hung out with Maddie, like that one time. For like the first time, they just like, got ice, ice cream. cream. He said, yeah. he just went to Dairy Queen. A little they influence didn't even touch. there. And, and he right. already, he was like, oof, I can't God. do this he anymore. He said, I need an exit plan immediately. <laughs> I want to go home. I don't want to. I, I want to go home! <laughs> immediately. immediately. Get out of this immediately. I don't even like this. He was Still like, girl, um. I think I gotta go work out at home. Hi. It's about that time, I'm gonna like, go take you off. Immediately drops her off and was like, "He's like, next thing I knew, I was in front of Maddie's house." I'm like, "Oh, said, that how did so I get cool. here?" He didn't even let her get in the house first before he drove <laughs> and he, off. That and he said on that two too. wheels. Okay, That's how you wheels. know it's over. That man didn't even care about your safety and well-being and anymore. Yeah, and did not. But and she delusional ass Wendy couldn't even figure that out. Right, Wendy was like. Hmm, she something's said, going on. He must be distracted He's about distracted. the ball or something. <laughs> or like the prom coming up. Just like, I'll just let it slot. Her inner monologues were so funny to me. <laughs> it was so silly. <laughs> like be Maddie, a f- for real. Fact. Maddie, Maddie was like, hmm, Kenny's outside. I'm gonna go make him a plate. Like it was just so, they were just I like, just like, 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 like it was just like they fit. Yeah, it was cute. Each and thing that they were lacking, the other person could like fulfill and help them with. Yeah, and when they Maddie both first... were different. You know, yeah. they. I feel they like were. they both couldn't be their true mm. selves unless they Ever. were with each other. So mm-hmm. it was like really mm-hmm. beautiful to that see. Like perfect. you know, Kenny was like you know masking, hanging out with the white kids. She literally was the weirdo loner in the corner reading. Stand up, girl. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> But Kenny was like, <laughs> Kenny was literally like, I got your back, babe. Like, I, I got, got your back. back. <laughs> and like, that was the only person that genuinely did have Maddie's back. But he was like, he like, they fell in love, y'all. And like, instantly. Two day- and it was instant. I know people might think that that's corny, but like, I ate when it up. When you're a teen, though. Oh, it is instant. You're literally just sitting there <laughs> thinking about how, about the person. And you like, literally can make yourself fall in love with them. Oh, that's what was yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so like, cute. Mm, how many kids are we going to have? Mm. How many dogs? What type of house? Like, she was playing MASH, baby. She said, mm, that's my man. <laughs> right. She was, she was like, Period. that's my man. She was like, I know Wendy's around here somewhere. So, but, but then when he he was like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about we her. We can handle her together. We'll get over this We'll together. talk to her. Like, oh. Yeah. Like, like, he made her feel so safe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which she needed because she was not safe at school or home. At she or home. We haven't even her fuck talked, ass daddy. talked about, about her, dad. her father. The main reason why she was passing. Fuck he, her daddy. Okay. Fuck he Mr. Washington. Fuck him. Was so he already grew <laughs> up in a less than abusive. ideal abusive. It was super abusive, religious. Very religious. Correct. Controlling. Um, his parents didn't like him. His older brother. There was a big age gap between mm-hmm. his older brother, so he never had a relationship with them because they dipped. Once they left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then he replicated all of this with his daughter. That weird. Now, I'm a Christian, so I understand prayer closets. What he had going for her, that prison Not, yeah. with the pictures of different white women. Pray to God that you can be like them, Maddie. Where do you Crazy. get off? Crazy. Crazy. Where do you get off? And stuck in his 1950s time loop. Like, come on. Mm. Only would watch on. shows from that. Come <laughs> on. Are you like, kidding come on. me? And then they were always watching odd shows. And then he come was like, old. you need to be one of these women, like, modest. Because when she wore, you know, when she made her cute little prom dress, 
and he was like she was uh, covered up her she was still covered up what she was like i'm literally wearing exactly what they wore in the movie she's like oh i'll just never be good enough for Ever. you and i'm glad she realized that mm-hmm. when she did because once you realize ain't no pleasing someone you can really <laughs> clear she your did mind that on oh, Loki way before the down. Whenever I don't know what was the exact scene where like she showed her powers to her dad, like that was the reason why she was like, I think he was about to hit her. He was about to hit her, her and then she said, "No, no, no." he did hit her. He backhanded her at Mm -hmm. dinner over that that chicken breast that she had made, and because she asked to go to the to prom with Kenny, and she let it Mm -hmm. slip that he was a black, and he and he said, "You have lustful thoughts for Negroes." And she was like, Why I'm going to stop you right there. She was like, I'm going to stop you right there. Freeze, daddy. Oop. Now, Literally. you have an issue with me and all this stuff, but look what I can do. So we're just not even going to talk about this anymore. Look at my new party trick, dad. Up. Yeah, <laughs> look at my new party and trick. he really he was, was like, like witch. Satan. Satan. Evil. The devil. Satan. Satan. You need to go like, pray oh, this away. This is what the Salem witch trials were like. As soon as somebody saw anything, witch, but in this case, she really she was. She actually, a lot of power. She really was. <laughs> she really was. She was and too dope. Like, yeah, you know how much power she had. I was really proud of her for mm-hmm. I'm not using her powers against her father. Per- standing up to him. Actually, Just no, I was. Yeah. Standing yeah. up for herself and then continuing on. She's like, I'm not going to get out of this house because I'm your <clears> daughter, <throat> but I will go to dinner or I will go to bed without dinner. I can do that for you. So that'll right. be my punishment. And then she continued to do what she wanted somehow in a respectful manner because she still loved her father, even though he was abusive and hurtful towards her, even though he kept the truth about her mother from her. She was like, I got to at least make sure you eat. I know you scared me, but here, go on ahead and take this pork chop because if you die on me. Meatloaf. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this this pot roast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she was a cooker she was like can we talk about no one else can, can we talk and about no one else some will. of the, the notes that her mother had left for her in that bible and how like over time those were like steadily kind of like giving her strength and confidence in herself yeah finding what out that you're that? not alone in that yeah because and, like, you know she you knew nothing this- about her mother zero zilch so when she was like wow everyone knows I'm a negro I want to know more about my Negro mother. Yeah. You know, that was the little, little itty bitty piece of anything she could find. And she just found that randomly, that Bible. Under her bed. I thought it was And I think that also coincided with her, um, her research to, you know, fill in those blanks that her dad's teachings, like, didn't include. Like, she was, her dad was a history nut. He just in- excluded everything that had to do with Black people and Black suffering. Um and she was in that library, baby. She was like, every lunch break, like, I'm going to mm-hmm. figure it out. I'm on YouTube. I'm going right. to teach myself. I'm going to educate myself. I'm, I want to learn. Like, she just had no idea. She had to mm-hmm. look up everything. And then when her, speaking of learning, when her teacher came for, I forgot what facts Maddie had shared with her teacher. And then she looked at her. She was like, I don't know if I wronged you or if someone else did, but that is not what happened. Like, that's not historically accurate. And then she right. had to show Maddie the Mm. truth of the civil rights movement. So the fact that her father was not only brainwashing her, but like giving her incorrect. The hot comb, her daddy putting grease on her head before flat ironing her hair and then purposely burning her when she got a, an, a, an, a an fake incorrect, fact. a fake fact wrong. That is diabolical. That's literally insane. Yeah. <laughs> like Diabol- there's my nothing eye else is even twitching say. right crazy. now. I'm glad it can't be seen, but my eye is actually twitching right now because this book made me so mad so many times. Like I really did have to just pause and put it down because I was like, oh, <sighs> damn it, Tiffany. Because some the way mm-hmm. this is things that some of these characters did, like, because we know, like, in the original Carrie, well, Kayla, you don't, but the rest of us know <laughs> in the original <laughs> Carrie, her mama was super. Her mother abusive. was very mm-hmm. abusive. 
<laughs> to the point where her mom didn't even tell her about a menstrual cycle. So the girl <laughs> thought she was dying in the movie, which is the same thing that happened here. <laughs> Carrie didn't know about a period until she probably got one. And then I think that was probably the same time that the birds came and then the nurse mm -hmm. at the hospital had to tell her. It's just... Oh, my God, the birds. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> what was that, even? That was her powers. They just yeah, felt it. Know. Yeah, the oh, birds. Oh, yeah, because like, birds do have an electromagnetic, like, not magnet, but, like, compass inside their head that helps mm -hmm. direct them so they can fly north or wherever else they fly. I did learn that. Um last year teaching but anyways yeah. the point is things can throw <laughs> off the bird's sense of Thank direction and caring. so was it wasn't it carrie's power like the, the same high pitch yeah. noise mm -hmm. that was hurting yeah the yeah young yeah. folk not but the high frequency tags. Yes, there were, remember you know. someone had said something about like the reactors were like moving towards her or something. She was messing like, with the whole plant. Was, Yo, the, the energy plant was about to there. blow. That's crazy. Because he was like 12,000. Uh, help us come now. He's like, <laughs> huh? 12,000. He said, I better get down to the plant. <laughs> Not even <laughs> realizing manager. he hadn't seen <laughs> his children. Nope. He didn't go. I mean, I guess in his own way, he was trying to protect his children because he was like, if if this is really as bad, is the, if yeah, that reading is really as bad. he was trying to do his bad, job and protect his so children. He was the manager. Because he, he like, did start crying like once he looked towards the town or something and like was seeing all the fires. He's like, I don't know. I just... know this shit isn't good. But and he never whole... saw them again. The whole thing about the prom that just set it all off that took it to a whole nother level. Not, a, a, you know, the police and all that took it to a whole nother level, but the 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 detonator, the, the thing that really like set everything off was Jules's Her Her whole idea <gasps> to ruin everything, she was plotting on this for months because, oh, mm -hmm. poor Jules, she was caught in blackface and, and shown on all social media. Now she can't go to college. Oh, my God. Like, she was even going to really be in college just to actu actually for her education. Right. Like, honey, be real. But she gets it in her head. She's like, I need to have some revenge because I need this to feel all better. Like, this is like, Maddie's I didn't do anything yeah, wrong. This is Maddie's fault. Like Whatever. <laughs> so instead of the red paint, and Carrie, or the blood and Carrie, whatever that mm -hmm. was, she gets some white, white. paint from her store, from her like daddy to paint on the walls, filled with hella chemicals, store. and that dumps it was all so over. diabolical. When, just, and this happens. This so happens cute. when Maddie gets crowned as prom Round. queen. Right, you know, she her and Kenny were having a good fabulous job. time. Having a fabulous good time. Good her fabulous hair was made. They you know, she had that silk press. She was giving everything. She was giving the girls what needed to be gave. She was Old having Hollywood a great star, time. Baby, period. Them, yeah. like, period. She was dancing with Kenny. Her he hair had curls. Her ear, holding her hand. He was. He literally mm -hmm. kept touching her. Like though he had a hand on her. He like had the whole to time. Touch like, her. So protective. To touch her. He was so drawn to her. He had and to like anytime like, somebody came her. up to them, like on anything, he immediately went in front of her. Like <laughs> you. Can he said, "I'm not her. about to let nothing happen. To nothing her. happen to her." At all, like she's gonna have a good time, to. and that's Tried it. If you want to, she was. She was. They were dancing. They were they having were such dancing. a good. Like that was like the perfect little I'm magical about to cry evening. It was so cute. And then <laughs> yeah. Jules, Jules was <laughs> able to ruin it. She and she it. had yeah. this feeling. She had this nagging feeling. Mm -hmm. She was like, "Something's yeah. wrong." Something's She's like, wrong. "You don't hear that buzzing." Like you don't and hear Kenny's that. Like, like something's like, going. Like he's like, in the moment. right? And she's like, mm. and she got humiliated. All of her hard work because she made that dress herself, sewed it, spent her last dollars. She literally, literally only had a couple dollars that she saved for years. Like that's only. all she had. That's not an exaggeration. She literally only had ten dollars. <laughs> and then remember, she the the rest she had left over. She got some lipstick and some mascara. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. And she was watching YouTube to try and figure out how to put it on. Like she looked, she had her kitten heels on. She Period. looked good. <laughs> she looked good. Our and then she looked better. better. 
Jules she does the cut. Jules. Ruined it all. Had to go and ruin it. By dump- I did think that was very interesting of Tiffany to, ch- to change the color of the paint. Because yeah, I was very curious when and then, she was in the store looking for the paint color. I was like, like what did she I pick? feel like it's not going to be red. Mm-hmm. It can't be But black. I didn't. I did it. not anticipate it being white, which contrasted so well with Maddie's dress color. Maddie was trying to hide, you know, that part of herself and her dress ended up yeah. being black. And then if she wants to be white so bad... She'll that look like it's whole to, point. right to dump right. it. It was just if you want to be white so bad, like honey, she wasn't going to be white anymore. You she you were so late, <sighs> literally. You wouldn't know if you weren't suspended from school. <laughs> she couldn't <laughs> even say that that was her own bad that she got suspended from school. Like she just had no self awareness at all. She just blamed everyone else mm-hmm. for her own actions. And doesn't that sound familiar? And that's what, like, mm-hmm. I'm. it's just so many parallels to real life. And it's one of those things, like, I feel like when you're reading this as a Black person, you, from Jump, you was like, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, I caught myself saying, mm-hmm, yep, as I'm, like, flipping pages. I'm like, mm-hmm, yep, typical. typical. Like, this was just so well done. <laughs> mm-hmm. That whole I just, I'm not over it. It was, it was just so good. The, the paint, paint jumping scene was, was really her giving her scalp. It was giving you remember her on hair, Degrassi when hair. they threw the paint and feathers on Rick right Ooh. after he. Yeah. That's what it was giving. And then and that's what set that. Rick off. Yeah, that makes, makes sense. That this leave is people alone. <laughs> that's really mind so your, your business and alone. leave people alone. It's not hard it's very and this is coming from somebody who's nosy i'm very nosy Same. it is not hard to mind your business and just and not turn your head be mean to people just unless you're just evil right and but she and wasn't even really hard <laughs> maddie wasn't even going to do anything right like, no. she and that's what made it even home and fucking cry mm-hmm. right she was gonna go home and cry but kenny said because he's so protective of her he has reasons to be protective of her. Kenny got set the fuck off. Per. And honestly, like, well, I'm both Maddie and Kenny. Because it's like, I would want to go home and cry as well. But it's like, no, I need my retribution because somebody right. has to answer to this. You ruined everything. Like, you ruined my entire night. And not to be dramatic, but someone me. has to die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I happened. Mean, like, Kenny just wanted somebody to own up to it. But then yeah. the mm-hmm. police all of that that was so triggering like i honestly like i My was just heart. flipping flipping like i was just mm-hmm. reading so fast because i'm like if this man mm-hmm. actually dies but I'm... wait before we get to that part cuz i just know once we do we going to be on it i did what what you mentioned alex about kenny was just so mad and he wanted to protect her i did see that parallel between kenny wanting to protect her and her father wanting to protect her because that's really what it was. Like her father did say that, that he loved it her. It was out of protection. Yeah. It was out, mm-hmm. but both of those protection styles were still j- detrimental to her because Kenny, when he was dragging her forward, he was like, no, they need to see what they did. Right. It's like, okay, you want them to see that, but while you're doing that, she's being humiliated, dragged mm-hmm. through with all this paint on her. Her father wanted to protect her. He, you know, forced her to not claim literally half of herself she was an outcast so both of those forms of protection were extremely detrimental to maddie's well-being and you know who she was as a person so i thought that was very interesting like your intention doesn't always yeah. match mm-hmm. the outcome mm-hmm. but going back to what you said alex about the police brutality i was sitting in my chair chair like shaking because i was like mm-hmm. please don't let what's about what i think is about to happen like, happen what we happen. think no, is real. about to happen like, happen please and then it did and, and, and how it was it way out? worse than i was anticipating it was so kenny getting bad beat in the head over and over and over again and the policeman being like in front of his get sister up. too in front well, of everyone well, i didn't do anything wrong yeah th- no one stopped off. him and, and, and I, nope. when I say no one, I'm talking about the cops colleagues. I don't expect the other the kids cops. or any civilians. Right. Right. Which remember, they had orders the to not do anything. And they, they had warned that sheriff be before. Someone came up to him and said, Already. he's kind of got a temper. Are you sure this is the best place for him to be? 
And then the oh, sheriff was fine. like, hey, mm-hmm. relax. No harm should come to them. But instead of staying and monitoring what could have turned into a potentially volatile situation and did, you went home to eat your wife and her pot roast. Like, and now everyone's dead and your town is burnt down. This but is they the sheriff's Maddie. fault, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's all Maddie's fault. Kenny literally got pushed. And it was Kenny's fault that he got beat. Yeah, Kenny that got pushed and sense. ran into the cop, and then he got beat. First of all, like, where is kids. your sense of pride? You you beat a teenager, which he probably didn't see Kenny as a teenager, but no, probably he saw him like, as an angry, roaring black man bull who who has no self control, who attacked him. Perspective. It just because my mind immediately went to um. Who was it? Was it Medgar Evers who was beaten in front of the crowd? Am, am I talking about the wrong person? I'm not sure what you're talking about. You said beaten in front of a crowd. Medgar Evers. I don't know. The... I'm not sure. Okay. Well, maybe I have the person's name wrong, which would be really unfortunate. I'll obviously need to brush we up on that. The... But I'm. We yeah, we'll figure that out and we'll make yeah. sure the actual information is there. <laughs> Facts. But that point in history where that person, that black man, was brutally attacked and beaten and it set off a chain of events, that's what I was thinking about when it happened you, to Emmett Till? No. It's a bunch of... Okay. I mean, I mean was, yeah. there's a bunch of examples about there's that. There's too many. History. Too many, honestly. I'm thinking of one specific... Y'all will see it on yeah. the bottom of the screen. So right. we'll okay. put it up again once we confirm. But um, that's what but I was once, thinking about. And that's yeah. really just set off that chain of events because then Maddie thought Kenny was dead He's because his dead. face was unrecognizable. Mm-hmm. And, and he wasn't breathing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Grand she couldn't feel a pulse. She which maybe really she just couldn't it. feel it because, you know, so much adrenaline and she couldn't yeah. Yeah. concentrate. Maybe that's so yeah. she thought he was dead. Mm-hmm. She said, and "Oh, he's dead. I'm a You're all gonna off. die too." I'm a and I was like, it all. Well, and at that point, I was I got literally it. cheering her on. I said, "Go off. Whatever happens, happens." Because there's yeah. no reason, honestly, for any of this to have transpired if at all everyone would have just left well enough, her- enough like alone. That's like all she be- wanted was to be left alone, and she couldn't even have that. So yeah, everything that happened. <laughs> She was she was slicing Bravo. and dicing. I understood. She, <laughs> up. she right. was the whole town she up. Was she was tearing the, She was fruit oh. ninja and everybody. She, 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 like, she walked in the door and everybody, everybody, was, everybody was insane. <laughs> she walked in the door of she okay, wait, before she even oh got to the to the little white the, people she prom, took them police. She lifted all the and let them fall on people. At that point she was like, whatever. That the only person so that I cared about is gone. Is dead. So, yeah. but she also was like not really that aware of what was going yeah, on. Yeah, she kind she of so wrapped in her own grief. Mm-hmm. You know that she and all anger. this stuff was happening, and she, you know, later she was like, "Damn, I did that." <laughs> Ooh, That's great. My bad. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> but then she gets to the country club. She opened the door. She blow the door open. Blow the door. That oh, boy got yeah. get trapped behind the door. So he the saw one what happened. The like, one survivor. Mm-hmm. The well, one survivor. From maybe not Lumber, whatever. But... but then he wakes up and he sees everything that's going on. And they immediately start laughing. Because they think it's just so funny. It's like, and what that is so funny? just speaks to how unaware of anything outside of themselves they are. Because let somebody pull up... <laughs> I'm out. Y'all ain't got to worry about me. You oh, might not facts. even see me move. I move so fast. <laughs> and me, they're over there kikiing. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm getting up out of here. Goodbye. Because mm-hmm. because Maddie, they already knew Maddie was quiet. Maddie mm-hmm. didn't, you know, ever make her presence very well known. She bust through them front doors. <laughs> what do y'all think off. is about to happen? Just for a moment. I thought it was a joke. Engage your like, brain. They Somebody really? bust through ha, the door is covered in paint and they he, look he, mad. Ha, ha, you're what about do you to think die. is about to happen? 
Exactly. Ha ha, you're about to die. So I mean right. there she you got go. Everybody. And did. did. Minus Except that boy behind the door. Jewel. Jewel Jules got all the dies. She lost her arm. Like Boo hoo. Boo hoo. I think Ooh. she should have lost her life. She should have been the first one to go. The first. Mm-hmm. At, mm-hmm. Because it was all Jewel's fault. Yeah. But I like that Maddie like evenly blamed everyone. It wasn't just like her because all the microaggressions, everything did add up to what ultimately happened. They all played a role in her. They all played a role and she And no one ever stood up or said anything. So that's you're being complicit in everything that's happening. Kendrick blamed Mm -hmm. himself for and also acknowledged she was like, I didn't actually say anything when it mattered. Yeah. He's like maybe the situation wouldn't have happened if from the very first time I saw her and they were throwing water balloons at her and she clearly looked scared, maybe Mm -hmm. I should have said something then. Which is usually the big message with bullying. Just say something because that will a lot of times stop people. Like, and this is not just for kids. Adults get bullied too. Y'all see it in your Mm boardrooms and in your conference rooms on the team meeting. When Sarah keeps interrupting Juliet, say something. Speak up. Because it's not cool. Like, if we're just all going to keep letting bullying happen, it's like, what's mm-hmm. the point of all of these campaigns? What's the point of multiple books being written? I just yeah. and I there's, can speak up. Maybe this is a controversial take, but I think there's, like, good bullying, too. Like, good peer pressure to get people to do the right thing. So some bullying mm-hmm. works. Good bullying, trying to get someone to be, look, you know, getting in them about something to do the right thing, that's fine. But to just sit there and let someone just get harassed for no apparent reason, undeserved, and let it just be hurtful and just, like, stand by and lay, damn, that's crazy that that's happening to them. That's not okay, babe. Mm Mm-mm. And Maddie subconsciously handled all of that. Yeah. She... She handled it. She Her power decided, said, she said, I got this, sis. Don't worry. Right. Take a seat. When she was done, she was like, <laughs> I, got this. I think it's time for me to go home. I think it's time for me to go home. She Hi, walks <laughs> She walks through the town. And people try and, you know, stop her. And she handles that situation, too, because she's like, I just want to go home. That's it. So... Yeah. Uh, Maddie's on her way home. She is leaving home. And, you know, we're still bouncing between the past of what actually happened and, you know, people's recollections of what happened in the mm-hmm. uh, podcast. And, you know, everyone's sharing, oh my gosh, Matt, I seen Maddie walking through. She looked kind of mindless. And some people decided to mind their own business and some people decided to get in it. And Maddie handled that. Eventually, Maddie <laughs> makes it home. <laughs> she said, because literally her scalp is burning. From, mm-hmm. the paint. from the paint. She's literally yeah. covered in it. She's like, I just want to get home so I can literally self-care for a second. Yeah. <laughs> so she like, gets home. She's like, Dad? Daddy? I wonder where he is. <laughs> <laughs> and she's oh. like, okay, I'm. A, let me go get myself together. All of a sudden, her dad pops up. Man. He, that was crazy. He's like, I knew this was going to happen, and I've been trying to stop this this entire time, and this is all like, on you. You're up. a monster. Just like I should have killed up. you when I, when you were a baby, but I didn't have the strength. Also, oh, now you yeah, got the strength. Were... Right. But then, okay, the fact now, and this is what I think I was stuck on the when you find out that the powers basically that were within her. <sighs> Came, came from her from dad's side, her dad's mom, from the grandmother. That was crazy. That was crazy. I said, yep. "Now wait, wait a minute." Because in my reconciled head, with that, I'm like, Me "This either. whole time I, I felt got like it from her mom." Like, yeah, right. duh. But no, because I'm like, is I? We know that I'm... her dad thought she was evil, but yes, yeah, like... so we all thought that was. The but black. it's like, is right. that the, but is that the power? It, the power can't just be evilness because it. I just I I'm not quite sure because grandmother well, he, well, he was said that his his mom was able to give people heart attacks and mm-hmm. or have them drop dead whatever, mm-hmm. and she was angry and mean and she, she had mean. issues with her yeah. anger. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that could still correlate to Maddie's powers because she did kind of black out and she was very aggressive and mean. And she did handle those situations and people was dropping dead. She didn't even know that. But yeah. to have that, like, be the white people's side. That was insane. I did not I anticipate that, was a, that. Me either. No, right? That was a very... Me. Me. That was wild. You, you got know, me. Like, yay. Because I didn't see that one nope. coming. <laughs> if it had been yeah. a snake, so, it would have bit me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know that thing? Like, I'll go look heard for it in such a long time. <laughs> Really? It's because you're an adult and you're finding things on your own. No, 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 that's not it. When I was a child, that used to always be the saying. Like, if I go and look for it and I find it, you're going to be in trouble. And then it's right there. If if that was a snake, it would have bit you. I got the first part of that. I never got the snake part. Because it was right there in your face. No, 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 no. You're not understanding. When I say God, I mean, like, I never heard that. That part was always left off. It was always, ah. well, if I find it, it's going to be a problem. Like, there was no... <laughs> oh, like, well... Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> well, It's go. okay. That's I learned something part. you say. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Right, right, right. right. We Got it. different parts of the South, so... That there you have it. it. Yep. Okay. All right. Anyways. So, <laughs> so I wasn't Maddie's at home. That. She's walking home. And then all of a sudden, we get back to the area of where maddie was at with the train tracks the police people um the country club all that we see kenny's sister and wendy figuring out that kenny's actually alive he is breathing barely he has a very very serious concussion he probably has some broken bones Mm -hmm. and ribs and you know he's but he's alive so (laughs) kenny's sister Callie begs Wendy, please help me. You said you loved him. Let's let's help him now. There's no one else to right now. Correct. So they managed to drag Kenny to the barn where the prom was at, the integrated prom was at. Um, and they're trying to get Kenny together. Poor thing. And Kenny's main MO when he wakes up is like, Maddie, like Where's Maddie? Maddie, where the Maddie. F- she at? And they're like, Oh, they were like, Maddie's Maddie did crazy. This. Maddie and they're like, this. No, you have to help her. He's like, you're not He's like, getting it. You don't get it. it. You don't understand. Okay. She needs our help. That's all she needed was help. And Callie was and like, then, you, right. you need to you, you need to make some shit shake, Wendy, for once in your life. Because because I can't. I got to take care of my brother. Right. He's, going, he's on the on. He needs help. He needs help too. <laughs> we got to <laughs> split our efforts. So Wendy, so, so I'm gonna do she really had to break it down to, to Wendy because Wendy wasn't Maddie. about to do it. Okay. Wendy was not about to do it. Callie literally said, please, Wendy, do something for someone else for a change. She's like, I always do that. No, you don't. You only do things for your own best <laughs> no, interest. <baby. laughs> Let's Self-serving. switch it up. Right. So Wendy's like, okay, okay, let me do something different. She runs to Maddie's house because where else can Maddie be, right? Everyone should have already known she went home. Um, but then we get flashback to Maddie and she is faced with what her dad's gun, her, her and her Mm -hmm. dad, her dad's trying to, you -hmm. know, end what he started essentially. And (laughs) Maddie's like, please don't like, I don't really want to do this to you, but if you don't want to do this in my face, I'm going to have to end you. And unfortunately for him. That didn't even happen. Yeah. That's that. Like. (laughs) Oh, we did. We should have put a trigger warning for suicide, too. Yeah. Because he blew his own self up. He did kill himself. He did. And then uh, Wendy Mm -hmm. comes. She was like, "Mm, the police are probably going to think you killed him, too. So we should probably get out of here. Yeah. Mind you, he did shoot her. Yeah. He shot her. Yeah, he did try to kill her. So. Yeah. This didn't work. Didn't work out well for him <laughs> at all. Yeah, so he tried to hurt her the only way that he felt that he could was by, because, you know, with all the abuse and everything, Maddie still had love for her dad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She couldn't really help it. Um, and it did hurt her. 
she didn't really know what to do. She was just going to sit there and wait for the police to come and get thrown into jail and everything. But Wendy intervenes. She's like, let's clean you up, hon. It looks a mess in here. Um, but she was like, and Wendy, Wendy, she gets, she has her little moment where she sees the gun. She's like, I can end it right here, right now. Like, honey, could you really? Not really. But thank God she didn't. She said, I'm right. actually going to help this girl whom I wanted to help this whole book. But never Allegedly. really helped her. But let me actually help her. Mm -hmm. um, and she says, get all your stuff, Maddie. Let's just get a little backpack together. Clean you up. And um, let's get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Trades they clothes get all her... with her. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. She gets trades clothes with her. So she's not that, you know. Mm -hmm. Cuts her hair. <laughs> Cuts her hair off. And now I, I was initially like why you had to cut her hair off like that wasn't necessary but it was and then for her to say that she's yeah. never even wanted this hair because yeah. like, it oh, cost her so much hair mm -hmm. right and she was never able to do that yeah so I you know she got like that a, with uh, tangled haircut like when you yeah 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 cut it just, yeah yeah just a real rough quick. chop oh and then she also got uh the postcards from her mother whom she thought was dead Ooh, wasn't yeah. really dead mm -hmm. she's somewhere in south carolina some mm -hmm. I don't like remember. little island off the almost like off the coast or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something like that. She's just been there the whole time, sending letters for her daughter because she didn't want to leave her. But I mean, she was <laughs> kind of forced to. Um, and she has so Maddie has a plan. She knows where she wants to go. Like when she finds the letters, it's like, wow, I have a home. Like I actually have family that actually does love me and want my best interests. So she's like, peace out. Like I'm gonna put this behind me. Um, so they're walking out the door. She says, wait, Wendy, I forgot something. She was, it ignites the entire house. Like, let's just settle that. <laughs> she did set the house on fire. Yep. <laughs> with her daddy. She said, with her wait, daddy wait. inside. Yeah. With her dead clean. daddy inside. She said, let's just. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that behind Let's get rid of that. And that. <laughs> Close that chapter. Right. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Wendy takes to the bus station and. So on and so forth. Then we get yes. like, I don't know, in the epilogue or something. Then we see that Kenny went missing that same night. They never oh, found their bodies. Found them. Never found they them. They never found them. Because Kenny is off somewhere else living the life that he wants. A lot was left unsaid. We mm -hmm. don't know where Maddie went. We don't know. If yeah. she, her, we know her mother moved short or disappeared shortly after yeah. that date all of them went off the map we know that callie they didn't mention her but i imagine callie also wasn't seen again i don't know if kenny and maddie met up but the way that he was feeling about her it's very possible that kenny and maddie are somewhere right. off living their best lives and honestly callie might being be their true them. selves yes yeah. being their true selves yeah. with each other wendy still gets a lot of hate because people think that she was the one that dumped the paint I would have blamed. Mm -hmm. I would have been honest. Jules did Jules that. Jules did it. I know you don't believe me, but Jules did it. Right. Um. So Wendy took that L, which is kind of the least she could have done. Um. Literally. She took that L, and was like, "Look, I don't, I don't know where they are. I don't know where any <laughs> of them are." Um. Although she did help Maddie, she probably doesn't know where Kenny is anymore. But I think she helped allow them to all be free. And I was happy, not happy, but I was pleased with at the end, um, the guest speaker on the podcast, Tanya, who was always like very skeptical of everything. She was like, well, let's not ignore the facts. Like that town was racist. There were mm -hmm. microaggressions happening to microaggressions happening to Maddie every day. She's like, you even named this pad this podcast, Maddie did it. She's like, honestly, Maddie seems to be the true victim here because she Correct. was a child. Yeah, she was a teenager, but we all know our brains don't even finish developing until 25. Maddie was a child mm -hmm. who had a yeah. series of unfortunate events thrown at her for the entirety of her life. And unfortunately, it ended in the badly. worst possible way. It ended badly. It's like, but I still don't think that she was a villain. And I'm glad that she said something because that podcaster, although he wanted to get to the bottom of it, Mm -hmm. was already very biased about immediately the, the facts. first he's like, chapter he's like no she does have powers viewing her as a supernatural yeah. being as what always right. happens opposed to as opposed a, to a actual literally child a teenager that right right 
And so mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting that the that Tanya, even though she was skeptical the entire time about like her powers and the supernatural mm-hmm. aspect, she's like, what I do know is that this entire town wronged this girl. She's like, I'm actually very glad that she left. She's like, because what did you want to get mm-hmm. out of this podcast? Right. Did you want her yeah. to admit it? Like, did you want her to come right. forward? Because that would end badly, too. She's like, so say to Maddie what she would want to say now. And honestly, at that point, I was over the other guy. So I, I don't remember right. what he said. But I do think that her even taking notice of what was the true issue and mm-hmm. what really led up to all these events was important. It's like, let's not just demonize this girl for basically her snapping like it was essentially a psychotic break after years Years. of emotional physical Mm -hmm. religious abuse on top of bullying and school like just being you know being outcast it was a lot so i mean it's unfortunate that so many people died that a lot of them have it coming (laughs) Mm-hmm. Y'all let us know what mm-hmm. you think in the comments. <laughs> right. right. We'll let, we'll let y'all decide. We'll let y'all. I, what did y'all I rate it? I like the open ending. I think I gave it a... I, I gave it a, it a five. four on... Well, you yeah. You definitely gave it a five, Aziza. I remember that. There we go. But I gave it a, it a 4.5. And the only reason... I don't even remember... I almost think it was still back to the fact that this magic... <laughs> came from her grandma. Yeah. yeah. I was I was mm. kind of I was kind of mad about that. I'm not going to lie to you. But this was really well done. Same. I think it's... I gave it a 4 4ish out of 5. Mhm. Yeah, and I think Still I gave good. it a 5. It was Yeah. It was very good. Shout out Tiffany. Yeah. Shout Honestly. out Miss Jackson. She wrote the shit out of this book. It's the it twist. Has so for many me. like Well, I gave it a 4. Twist. The leg I gave it a yeah. Four. All y'all gave it a four. All the layers. A so the, many layers. Yeah. So and then many the different layers. twists at the end. Like, there's always a twist. There's always some sort of yeah. twist in her books. And so many different She topics. did that. This. I also, I, I like the ending, too. I like that, like, mm-hmm. not, like, you just have like to take the ending for yeah. No was. closure. Like, yeah. You can mm-hmm, speculate just, about what happened. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I don't like it, but she did it so i have to do you wanted an epilogue you <laughs> wanted an yes, epilogue, baby. From Maddie, I like, an epilogue. dear diary living happily ever after with my boo kenny he just i just want to know that Love maddie that. is i just want to know that she's you know <laughs> live laughing and loving you know that's all i want but I, well, think I, her, I think she is because remember that's what the newscaster said she was like or not the newscaster but that podcast woman tanya she was like well maybe like this is the way maddie took control of her life by not saying anything to us about the situation that has made people mm. wonder for years. So it's almost kind of nice because you can make up whatever ending you want. You I'd want. like to believe right. that Maddie is adjusting to the life that she creates on her own with Kenny there to support, her, support her, her and live, mm-hmm. live life on his terms yeah. as well. And they're doing it together. together. I picture them yourself. in a different country. I don't even think they're in North America College. anymore. Yeah, I think they just yeah. left. They're like backpacking in India or something. <laughs> See, I pictured them in Colombia, but maybe mm, they're just okay. traveling around. Mm. Yeah, yeah, just with Cali too, because I admit, I imagine Cali. Actually, Cali went to Africa. She probably went to Ghana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Facts, but this book so, was so good. Love Tiffany. Yeah, she really did that. I. This book is so much deeper. Like, who wrote? Who wrote Carrie? A Stephen um, King. Who, Stephen King. Uh, did he? Really? Stephen King. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Stephen King. But you know, to have a uh, Carrie be, it was written. I looked it up. It was written in like seventy six or mid seventies, and to have this, you know, remix remake. Adaption in 2022 you know. adaption, you know, was really good. Yeah, really, mm-hmm. really good. Loved it. Um, very interested to see what Tiffany has next in her like in her bag. I don't, Whatever I don't know. It is. I'm very excited. Right, we want to read it. <laughs> We're gonna read it. I'm gonna have to go back mm-hmm. and read her other books too because now I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. 
especially like allegedly Monday's not coming. The other one, yeah. the purple cover one that y'all were talking the white about. Smoke. White smoke. Right yeah. It's like oh, once I find smash? like I trust Tiffany to give me one hell of a story. So kudos to you, Miss Jackson. Right, right. This was Thanks. very well done. Right. Well, that ends another episode <laughs> of the TRBG podcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell us your comments your thoughts whatever 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 you want to say if you agree with what we're saying if you disagree if you want to fight us because you don't like our opinions that's cool too just tell us yeah. in the comments just let us know <laughs> thanks for tuning oh, in <laughs> on that note see y'all later <laughs> bye bye y'all <laughs>